good morning students good morning to all and last day we have studied about the strengthening of the indian economy or the features of indian economy so today just we will go to the next concept without having any of the revised because we don't have the sufficient time okay last day we have studied about the strengthening of the indian economy what are the factors was there to make the strength and to our indian economy so today just we will study about the weakness of indian economy so what are the factors are there to make a weaken or weak of our indian economy some of the factors are there among this factor first one is large populations the large populations make weakening of our indian economy india stands second in terms of size of population next to china and our country is likely to overtake china in near future so on first stage the china only was there as it has the large populations but now the india is going to take over that china in the size of populations the population growth rate of india is very high and this is always a hurdle to growth rate how the large populations will become as a hurdle to growth rate so whenever the population growth is increase so we have to increase in the supply of commodities we have to the government have to spend more money to the public infrastructures we have to provide the proper education facilities and the medicine facilities to all the peoples and not only that we must to provide the employment opportunities to the all the increased populations but if a government has the power are the populace are the possibilities to providing these all the facilities to increase in the populations it is not a matter but if the governments are not having the power to providing all these facilities to the increased populations so the populations the large populations will become as a weakness of indian economy weakness to the indian economy the indian economy will never increase or get the growth with the large populations the population growth rate in india is a high as 1.7 per 1000 the annual addition of population equal to the total population of australia so australia when we are comparing to the australia our increased populations in every year is higher so every year our increased population is very higher than the total population of australia then just you can think how the la populations will become as a weakness of indian economy next inequality and poverty so there exists a huge economic disparity in the indian economy a huge economic disparity mean so in our indian economy the different type of the populace po- different type of the people are there the rich peoples and the poor peoples and always the inequality will be existing among these two type of the persons and not only that the poor people always become as a poor and the rich people always become as a richest persons so the proportion of income and assets owned by top 10 percentage of indians goes on increasing so most of the peoples always being as a poorest and the 10 percentage of the peoples only as a populous or a richest peoples and most of the income also fell into that persons only so this has led to an increase in the poverty level in the society and still a higher percentage of individuals are living below poverty line so even though we are earning more money so we cannot improving our living standard and because of that so many of the people also lying in the poverty situation itself as a result of unequal distribution of the rich becomes richer and the poor becomes poor next increasing price of essential goods even though there has been a constant growth in the gdp and growth opportunities in the indian economy 
there have been steady increase in the price of the essential goods. The price of the essential goods must be as a constant, then only all the peoples or the middle class peoples and the poor peoples can be able to purchase that essential goods. But if it is not steadily constant and if it is the increasing price level of the essential good is going up, the poor people and the middle class peoples always will be getting their trouble. The continuous rise in price erodes the purchasing powers and adversely affects the poor peoples whose income is not protected. Some of the fixed income peoples and the poor peoples also will be affected by the way of increasing the price of essential goods. Even if they are not having the interest to purchase in the comforts and the luxury goods, they will have in the need of purchasing the essential goods. But if the price of the essential goods is increased, so the peoples will always struggle. And because of that, they will not having the savings interest and the power of savings. So our economy will never get the more capital formations. And next, weak infrastructures. Our infrastructure facilities also may have very weak. So even though there has been a gradual improvement in the infrastructural development in the past few decades, there is still a scarcity of the basic infrastructure like power, transport, storage, etc. also very low. So when we are having the low or the weak infrastructure facilities, we will never abstract the foreign direct investment. And the foreign investors also will never come to our nations to make any of the investment on any of the particular industries. So they will always expect the high infrastructure facilities. But our Indian economy also has one of the problem to make a major infrastructure facilities. Next, inadequate employment generations. With growing youth populations, there is a huge need of the employment opportunities. But our nations are not able to providing or creating the employment opportunities in our nations. Because this is the reason of high populations. But even though whenever the population is going to increasing, the population of youngs also will be increased. So the young populations or the young peoples always need of having the employment opportunity. But if that position is not provided by the government, it will also will be become as a weakness of our nations. Because the employment generations only will become as the more capitals and because of that it will be creating the more capital formations. But inadequate employment generations also one of the hurdles of Indian economy. The growth in production is not accompanied by creation of job. The Indian economy is characterized by jobless growth. Jobless growth means so they will never produce any of the commodities without having the employment opportunities. And if they having the employment opportunity only, they can have the power to consume any of the commodities produced by the production unit. So without having the employment opportunity, the productions also will be affected by the industries. Next, outdated technology. The level of technology in agriculture and small scale industry is still outdated and absolute. So the, some of the outdated technology only is going to use in the agricultural sector and even in the backward industrial sectors. So if it is being like that, we will never produce more and our Indian economy also will not be increased. So the six points are there, six factors are there to become as a weakness of our economy. First, large population, inequality and poverty, increasing prices of essential goods, weak infrastructure, inadequate employment generations and outdated technology. Next, demographic trends in India. Demographic trends, how the population's trends is going to increase or in which 
strengthened the India's meat in the demography. The scientific study of the characteristics of population is known as demography. The various aspects of demographic trends in India are size of populations, rate of growth, birth and death rates, density of populations, sex ratio, life expectancy at birth and the literacy ratio. First, if you are taking the population growth, so over a period of 100 years, India has quadrupled its population size. In terms of size of populations, India ranks second in the world after China, as we know already. India has only about 2.4 percentage of the world's geographical area and contributes less than 1.2 percentage of the world's income, but accommodates about 17.5 percentage of the world's population. But when our surface is highly expand, we will have some of the accommodate, 17.5 percentage of accommodate we can bring in. But even though 2.4 percentage of the world geographical area, the 1.2 percentage of the world income only we can provide it. In other words, every sixth person in the world is an Indian. How? The every sixth person in the world is an Indian. So when we are comparing to the world population, the Indian populations may be the sixth percentage. So in, in fact, the combined population of just two states, namely Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra, is more than the populations of United States America, the third most populous country of the world. So even though the America is the third most populations of the world, a population of our two states peoples only will be equal to the America. Then just to remain, just to think yourself how our populations. Some of the states in India have larger population than many countries in the world. For example, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Myanmar, and some of the populations of the nations will be very lower in the populations of our one state. The negative growth during 1911 to 21 was due to rabid and frequent occurrence of epidemics like cholera, black, and influenza. And also, famines, the year 1921 is known as the year of great divide for India's populations as populations start increasing. So, in beginning the 1921 only, the population of India was increased. So the 1921 was called as the year of great divide. So next to the during the 1951, the population growth rate has come down from 1.33 percentage to 1.25 percentage. Hence, it is known as year of small divide. The population was decreased. So after that, in 1961, the population of India started increasing at the rate of 1.96 percentage to 2 percentage. Hence, the 1961 is known as year of population explosions. So, just we have to remind the three years, the 1921 is known as the year of great divide, and the 1951, the year of small divide, and the 1961 is the year of population explosions. Next, we will see about the birth rate and death rate. So, the birth rate and death rate. The birth rate refers to the number of birth per thousand of populations. Per thousand of populations, how many of the babies are born is considered as a birth rate. Death rate refers to the number of death per thousand of populations. Per thousand of populations, how many of the people is going to death is considered as a death rate. The birth rate was 39.9 in 1951. It fell to 21.0 in 2011. So Kerala has the lowest birth rate and Uttar Pradesh has the highest birth rate. 
West Bengal has the lowest death rate and the Orissa has the highest death rate among the states. So among states, Bihar has the highest decadal growth rate of populations while Kerala has the lowest growth rate. So whenever we have the more populations growth on the basis of the effort of the state government, it will be come to the control. Next is the density of populations. The density of populations refers to the average number of persons residing per square kilometer. It refers to the average number of persons residing per square kilometer. It represents the man land ratio. As the total land rate remains the same, an increase in population causes density of population to rise. So our utilized resources is going to use on the basis of increasing the populations. Next, sex ratio. It refers to the number of females per thousand males. Per thousand males, how many of the females are there is considered as a sex ratio. It is an important indicator to measure the extent of prevailing equity between males and females at a given point of time. So per every year, the sex ratio is declined in many of the states. In India, the sex ratio is more favorable to males than to females. In Kerala, the adult sex ratio is 1084 as in 2001. The recent census shows that there has been a marginal increase in sex ratio. So Haryana has the lowest sex ratio of 1877 in 2007 among the other states. So in 1951, the thousands males, 1946 males only was there. And in 2001, so 1933 males only was there to the females. Next day, life expectancy of birth. The life expectancy of birth refers to the mean expectation of life at the birth. So, Approximately how many of the years is going to live by one of the men is considered as the life expectancy. We will have the expectancy of the birth in a man at a particular time. The life expectancy has improved over the years. The life expectancy is low when death is high and or instances of early death are high. On the other hand, the expectancy is high when death rate is low and our instances of early death are low. Next, literacy ratio. The literacy ratio refers to the number of literates as a percentage of the total populations. In this total populations, how many of the peoples are having as a literates as considered as a literacy ratio? In 1951, only one-fourth of the males and one-twelfth of the females were literate. But now, the 74.0 percentage of the peoples are having the common rights to having the literacy ratio. Next, the natural resources. So our Indian economy, the growth and development of Indian economy also depending upon the natural resources of our nations. So only we have to study about the natural resources in the subject of Indian economy. So any stock or reserve that can be drawn from nature is a natural resources. If we can extract any of the resources from the earth, are natural is considered as a natural resources. The major natural resources are land, forest, water, mineral and energy. The India is a rich in natural resources but majority of the Indians are poor to use and extract the sources from there. 
The nature has provided with diverse climate, several rivers for irrigations and power generations, rich minerals and rich forest and diverse soil. Next, the types of natural resources. So we can broadly classify the natural resources as a two types. First one is renewable resources. The renewable resources that can be regenerated in a given space of time. For example, forest, wildlife, wind, biomass, tidal, hydro energies. So this type of the resources are we can regenerated with a particular time. Next one is non-renewable resources. The non-renewable resources means it cannot be regenerated. For example, fossil fuels, coal, petroleum, minerals. Once if you are taking from the natural and if it is used, we cannot regenerate. And the two most of the major resources is land resources and forest resources. In terms of area, India ranks 17th in the world with the total area of 32.8 lakh square kilometer. So, however, the land man ratio is not favorable because of the huge population range. If the people has more area for their cultivations, for their productions, so our Indian economy has the chance to increase the growth. Next, forest resources. So, India's forest covers in 2007 is 69.0 million hectares, which constitute 21.2 percentage of the total geographical area. And some of the important mineral resources. So, there is no need to explain more. Some of the mineral resources are there. So, students, please, you can study yourself. If you have any doubt, please ask me. And just I am telling the what are the resources are there. So iron ore, coal and lignite and parkside, mica and crude oil and gold and diamond. So India possesses the high quality iron ore in abundance. The total resource of iron ore in the country are about 14.63 million tons. So wherever the availability of the iron ore is their main. So the Karnataka and Kerala and Tamil Nadu in Uttar Pradesh and gold and lignite the coal is the largest available mineral resources so India ranks third in the world after China and US so the availability of the coal and lignite in our India is Bengal, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, Odisha and bauxite the bauxite is the main source of metal like aluminium and major resources are concentrated in the east coast bucket. Next to the gold, the India possesses only a limited gold resource and the coal are gold field, coal are district and in the Andhra Pradesh, the Ramgiri gold field is also one of the unknown other known place to driving the gold. Okay, students, as I told, if you have any doubt, please ask me. Just some of the types of mineral resources only is there. If you have any doubt in this weakness of Indian economy, just please ask me. And after that, everything is there, information only. So there is no need to explain more. When you are seeing the tables and the example only, you can easily understand. Okay, student, thank you.